Hey guys, welcome back. So we want to do a follow-up video to the Brin 2 762x39 problems that are being reported on the internet. If you go back several weeks into our own video library, you will find that we conducted a thousand round test. We showed every shot being fired using Jason's 762x39 Brin 2, and we had no malfunctions in terms of stove piping issues. So we could not reproduce the problems with his gun, coming from a guy that typically breaks everything he touches. So I've been in discussions with folks on places like AR15.com where there's ongoing threads, trying to figure out what might be wrong with the 7.62x39 Brin 2 pistols. And it's a mixed bag as to what people are predicting, but what we wanted is a gun that we knew was having problems so we could actually put it on the slow motion camera and see what was going on with regards to the bolt and carrier uh, while the gun was cycling and see if we could catch it stove piping, which we were able to do. And that's what we want to talk about in this video. A viewer on AR15.com, and when I say a viewer, he's also a viewer of the Military Arms Channel, volunteered this gun. He sent it to us so we could put it on a slow motion camera, shoot it, see if we could get some problems. And I want to thank him for doing that. That's really generous just to send a complete stranger your gun because he's doing it so we can do our testing, try to figure out what's going on, and further help the community that's trying to get to the bottom of this because CZ still hasn't come out that I'm aware of at the time of this filming with a solution to the problems with these firearms. So what we're gonna do is gonna start off, this is a 14 inch barreled gun in 7.62x39. There are three different barrel lengths and two different types of gas systems. You have a nine inch, 11 inch, and a 14 inch in the 7.62x39s. And when you get into the 11 inch, there's a slight difference in the gas plug inside there. So when we start talking about gas port settings and things like that, keep in mind, not all gas systems are the same across all three different barrel lengths. So just again, keep that in mind. Today, we have some Golden Tiger that we're gonna be shooting. We've already caught the malfunctions. And what's kind of weird, the more we shoot this gun, the fewer malfunctions we seem to have. But what I want you to watch is when this gun cycles, look how far forward it's throwing those spent cases. When I'm holding the gun here with my support hand, many times I can feel the spent case brushing across my finger, which is telling me this gun is wildly overgassed. And it's on its standard port setting. It has two port settings where you have standard and adverse. The third position just shuts the gas completely off. We're firing it on its standard position. felt at least two hit my pinky, and I also saw brass cases flying rearward. And we can show you that happening in slow motion and what's going on. And if you take a look at the front of the ejection port here, that's gonna give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. The gun is not working properly. Let's get into the video. We're viewers supported via Patreon. The reason we can bring you informational videos like this and be critical of major manufacturers' products is because we're beholden to you, our viewing audience, who supports us via Patreon. We're not supported by the gun industry. We're not supported by CZ or anybody else. We're supported by you. How can you help support us in our mission to not only bring you as unbiased information as humanly possible, but also help us in our fight for our Second Amendment rights? There's a link in the video description below to our Patreon page. Consider becoming part of our Patreon family. Thank you. When the Bren 805 came out, which is the predecessor to the Bren 2, a lot of people compared it to the FN SCAR and said it was a Czech copy of a SCAR 16. And I can see that comparison. They're very similar in design. And I wanted to point out one other thing though. By the time we get to the Bren 2, so the Bren 2 is definitely different in design than the original 805. We don't have a reciprocating charging handle and they made some other differences uh, inside of the gun, but still very similar to the SCAR and the original 805. But what I wanted to show you is the fact that this gun has more than a passing resemblance to the ACR. And there's one major difference between the Bren 2 and the SCAR 16, which we'll also talk about here momentarily. But first, let's take a look at the ACR. Now, we've already checked to make sure that both weapons are empty, but go ahead and do it again. Let's take the bolt and carrier group 
out of the ACR here really quick. Play that there. Grab our Bryn 2. carrier group out. Now, if you take a look at these bolt and carrier groups, you're going to find that they're very similar in design. They both use AR-15 style bolts. You will notice that the Bryn 2's bolt is beefier than the ACR's, but in essence, they're very, very similar in design. If you take a look at the recoil spring guide rods, the shape of the bolt, where they each of the carriers ride on the rails inside of the receiver, and the resemblance gets even more alike when you flip them over and you take a look at where the firing pin takedown pins are and the camming pins for the bolt in the carrier. So it's a, a very similar design. And why do I bring this up? Well, we put the ACR on the slow motion camera and we notice that the ACR and the Bryn 2 have something in common that they don't have in common with the SCAR. So if you take a look at the SCAR-16 being fired in slow motion, the whole bolt and carrier group actually goes out of sight as it travels rearward in the receiver. It has much longer throw to it. So the bolt and carrier go way back into the receiver. That spent case is long gone before you start to see that bolt and carrier reappear in the ejection port going home, stripping a fresh round and reloading the rifle. The ACR and the Bryn 2, they share a much shorter throw. So when the bolt and carriers on both the ACR and the Bryn 2 start to move rearward, as soon as that bolt face gets to the rear of that ejection port, the whole mechanism stops and it immediately starts traveling forward. There's very little time for that spent case to get out of the way before that bolt starts to come home, bolt and carrier group comes home. And so if you overgas the gun, you're gonna speed up that velocity and that could potentially cause the malfunctions we're seeing in the Bryn 2. So that's why I thought it'd be interesting to point these two out because when you take a look at them both working in slow motion, they're very, very similar. Now the ACR has a slightly taller ejection port and a slightly shorter ejection port than the Bryn 2. But again, in general, they both do the exact same thing. They come to their rearmost travel. It's very short in comparison to the SCAR-16 and they immediately start going forward. The ACR, however, isn't as overgassed and has a nice clean ejection pattern, whereas every Bryn 2 that we've fired so far and by 39 does not have clean ejection unless you mess with the gas port and make a smaller gas port. The factory gas port settings allow or cause them all to eject forward at least to the two o'clock position in some bad cases as, as far forward as the one o'clock position bouncing off the face of the ejection port itself or shooting the, or hitting the shooter in their support hand. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website. Please follow that link and from there you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please, again, check out BDU. Please welcome back the Target of Truth, and today we will be pointing out the various details with the Wand of Wisdom. So let's kind of go over what we've discovered in our testing. We have Jason's 11-inch gun that we did a 1,000-round test, which you guys can watch that video and see every shot fired, and his gun had no problems. But, of course, we had said in that video, even if we don't encounter problems, it doesn't mean those problems don't exist. Clearly, they, they do exist. So over on AR15.com, there's a viewer of the Military Arms Channel. He sent us his gun, which was having stovepipe issues, so we could put it on the slow motion camera and see if we could figure out what was going on. Now, Jason loves tinkering with his guns. His gun was running fine, but all the Bryn 2s have a third position on their gas settings, the pistols, and that third position is zero or off. It turns the gas off. Jason took the opportunity to drill a slightly smaller gas port in that third position just to slow that bolt carrier velocity down because again, all the by 39 guns 
are wildly overgassed. The 5.56s may be, but they don't seem to have the same problems that the Bi-39 guns are having. So when we take a look at Jason's gun, you'll see a different behavior when we're using that third position on that gas port versus the factory port settings. Now, the gun that was having the problems has a 14 inch barrel. So we have Jason's gun with an 11 inch barrel and then the test sample that we know has problems, 14 inch barrel. So here's where we are. The problem, all guns are overgassed, and in particular, we're talking about the by 39 so 762 by 39 guns. Two, possible issue with the extractor and the ejector, and why do I say that? When we take a look at the slow motion footage that we shot of the gun in multiple different configurations, the problem gun, we noticed in some instances it really looked like that extractor was holding on to that case far too long, so when the bolt's coming back to the rear, and then it starts its forward travel, the case is still in the ejection port. So is it the extractor, is it the ejector, or is it a combination of both? So that would be our point number two under potential problems. So observations with Jason's 11 inch gun based on, you know, obviously what we had seen. Point number one, ejects forward over gassed with factory port settings. So. All the pistols have two settings, standard and adverse, and then you have that third off position with the pistols. With a standard setting, his gun was over gassed, but his gun never malfunctioned. It liked to throw the spent cases forward towards the 132 o'clock position, but none of them ever bounced off the front of the ejection port, marring up the front of the ejection port like the gun that is stove piping that we have out here. Um, so it's still over gassed, but for some reason, his gun did not have those malfunctioning problems. So there are guns out there that are working, and then there are guns out there that are not. And we were trying to figure out what the variable or variables might be that would be causing those problems. Also with Jason's gun, uh, we had no failures in 1000 round test um, using again, that factory port, kind of being redundant there. I'm getting ahead of myself. So. Jason mods to his 11 inch gun and what were the outcomes, all right? So Jason, as I mentioned, drilled a smaller third port in his zero position on his gas plug. He reduced the amount of gas that his 11 inch barreled gun was getting. And when we get to testing the gun with that smaller gas port, we had flawless three o'clock ejection. When you take a look at the ejection pattern on his gun in slow motion with that smaller gas port, the bolts coming back, the case is clearly out of the ejection port and it goes home and the gun consistently puts that brass right there at the three o'clock position. No more erratic ejection, throwing it forward, bouncing off the ejection port, throwing the spent case back. All the problems we see with the, the uh, 14 inch barrel problem gun, we see none of that now with that reduced gas pressure in Jason's gun. Now we did not have permission to drill the gas port on the AR15.com user's gun. But what we did do is take Jason's gas plug and put it into that gun and put it on slow motion and see what we had, would find out. So problems with the viewer's gun. Keep in mind the viewer's gun has the 14 inch barrel. Uh, it's over gassed on both factory settings. Okay, so you have standard and adverse, and if it's overgassed on standard, it's definitely gonna be overgassed on adverse. And we did catch it on slow motion, stove piping and having failures. And again, when it's failing, you can clearly see, it looks like that extractor or ejector are not working properly, but then when we reduce the amount of gas pressure, things seem to start working more properly. So is it a bolt carrier velocity issue? You guys can be the judge, I'm not an engineer. All right, so three, many cases almost failed to eject and we have that lazy ejection with that problematic gun. So it'll, even when it doesn't stove pipe, you'll see those spent cases going forward. Some of them will brush my fingers. Some of them will actually hit and they leave a little nick on the front of the ejection port and they'll bounce back or they'll fall back in to the ejection port or they may not even ever get out of the ejection port and that will cause a stove pipe but in almost every single case, every round fired, the gun was not ejecting properly and was borderlining on having a failure, a stovepipe type failure. So changes to the problem gun and the results that we saw. So number one, we put Jason's gas plug in the 14 inch barreled gun. 
Now keep in mind, we could have reduced the gas more to the 14 inch barreled gun had we had permission to drill it. And still, we, um, we saw that the gun was over gassed, but there were no failures. So by reducing the gas, the port is smaller than the other two port settings on um, the factory gun that was having the problems. We reduced the gas a little bit and the failures went away, but it's still kind of favoring throwing that brass forward. We could stand to drill a smaller hole in the 14 inch gun and it would slow that bolt carrier velocity down and possibly get it ejecting to the three o'clock position like it does on Jason's gun. We put Jason's bolt carrier group in the problematic gun. So we left the factory gas plug in the problematic gun and we just took Jason's bolt carrier group, threw it in there, fired it on slow motion to see what would happen. We're trying to test all different possibilities here. And again, it's still over gassed and comes really close to having failures, but we didn't catch any failures on slow motion. Keep in mind, his gun was only having stovepipe failures once every three or four magazines. Some people say that they're having stovepipe, stove, stovepipe failures four or five or 10 times a magazine. So the problem isn't consistent in how many failures you get per magazine. The gun that we were sent that had the problem, we had to shoot quite a bit to get those stovepipe failures, but we could clearly see in slow motion, again, the ejection pattern was not anywhere being correct. So, that was our, our final resolution there with all the different combinations we tried with the gas port and swapping out the bolt carrier group. In conclusion, all by 39 guns appear to be over gassed in our opinion. So we have a couple of by 39 guns here that, you know, Jason has one. I have one of the early uh, guns that came into the country. Neither one of our guns have had any malfunctions whatsoever, but clearly there's a growing number of reports of other by 39 guns having failures. Two, a smaller gas port size, uh, the, it's the uh, I'm sorry, that smaller port size on the problem gun may actually fix the issue. So that goes back to the port size from Jason's gas plug. If it were a bit smaller and we had put it into the problematic gun, we may have seen that three o'clock ejection. And in slow motion, it certainly looks on Jason's gun like it's ejecting as it should be. That case is getting out pretty much every single time as it should be. And then let's see here, number three, possible issues with the extractor and the ejector. So it might not be as simple as just changing the gas on the gun. There may be geometric issues with the, the extractor claw itself. There could be issues with the extractor spring. And guys, there's people out there on the forum saying that they've put AR-15 extractor springs into their bolts. Don't do that because they're breaking extractors. CZ does not have extra parts. If you go drilling holes in your gas plug and you screw something up, CZ does not have extra parts. So that's gonna take us to our last point, number four. Don't attempt to fix this at home. In talking with CZ, they say that they haven't gotten very many guns in with the problem, so they're having a hard time diagnosing the problem themselves. It could be an engineering problem in terms of the design of the ejector, the design of the extractor, but clearly we're seeing clear evidence of being way over gassed. So if you have a problematic gun, your best bet is don't do that, you know, armchair gunsmithing get a recall slip from CZ, send it to them and let them take a look at it because the last thing you wanna do is make the problem worse and possibly jack up your warranty. Guys, please be sure to like, share and subscribe to our videos and hit that notification bell so you get notified when we post new videos. It really helps us with the algorithms and also take some time to comment in the comment sections down below and many times we'll jump in and enjoy having a conversation with you guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's video about the Bryn 2. We wish we could give you more definitive information. I know you guys are gonna say, well, what size is the gas port that you drilled in Jason's gas plug? We don't wanna give that information out because we don't really know that that's the proper gas port size. That's working for his gun right now. But again, like I said before, earlier in the video, there's multiple different gas systems just in the by 39 pistols. So we don't want to have you guys going out there drilling holes and not be able to get replacement parts should you break something. 
All right, guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, of course, you know you can support us through Patreon. Also, right here underneath the video player you're watching right now, there's a little join button. Click that join button. You can support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization for so many different channels, not just gun channels, but a lot of channels. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 12 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, let's see how she does with the last few rounds. This is the problem gun. She gave us one final stovepipe before we send her back to her owner. Oh, and then we get a double feed. Yep, the Bryn 2 762x39 has some fleas. We hope CZ is able to get them sorted out. Thanks for watching, guys.